Well, we seem to be plagued with a series of squalls and uh, we just jibed to get a better angle on the island. And my goodness, we've got the one we're in, these two that are gonna miss us, and another one coming down the yonder. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a wet morning, but I guess that's the cost to get closer to the two Motus. After four and a half full days, of sailing, we're arriving at Fakaraba and the Tuamotus. So these low-lying islands are encased by a submerged reef um, that we're about two miles away from, but apparently there is a pass, so a break in the reef for us to enter. You're supposed to enter at slack tide because the ebbs and flows are quite significant. I mean, you've got the entire Pacific Ocean trying to flood into this atoll. That was our dangerous vessel's alarm. A little unnecessary. Anyway, this will be our first atoll entry. Okay, so we are entering the pass at Fakaraba. There's a reef over there, a reef over there, and you will not be able to see it, but a shit ton of coral below us. But apparently it's plenty deep enough. We just need to make sure that we're going in between these green markers. 91, 91, this is Ed. Hi, this is T. Adjusting for me footage with some uh, radio sound. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, anyway, we have walkie-talkies on the go so that we can um, communicate a little easier without yelling. But, I mean, this shit is not for the faint of heart. It is. A little sketchy, but super fucking cool. Well, I'll continue keeping a lookout, but it is not good visibility right now. Taken and so Anna yeah, generously let us raft up. And then, either way, it's fine. And so when they push off, we're going to take their mooring buoy. Pulling into Harifa Anchorage at the uh, southwest corner of uh, Fakaraba Atoll. Our friends on Ripple, Ben and Molly, are dead ahead. And uh, we're hoping to find about 10 meters of sand and uh, drop the old hook. It's going to be awesome. Pakakota on Fata Fakarava. Buddy. We are going running with the, the neighborhood dogs. 
Puff is uh, struggling to keep up. Hi, T. Hi. Ready for the fucker of a North Pass? I am. Exciting. Good blustery yeah, conditions. This looks like way easier than the South Pass. Yeah. The South Pass was like a little sketch, but this is huge. And deep and wide. Yeah. But a little bit more waves because it's uh, yeah. got the whole fetch of the lagoon. Yeah. So, I don't know. Soon. Exploring the Fault's Pass. Drift around in our wonderful craft. This is the best place to find the lovers of the bar. It's where I go. Me and my friends sat at the table doing shots, drinking faster than we talk slow. Come over and start a conversation with just me And trust me, I'll give it a chance Now I'll take my hand, stop a Venom man on the jukebox And then we start to dance And I'm singing like, girl, you know I want your love Your love was handmade for somebody like me Come on now, follow my lead I may be crazy, don't mind me, say boy Thank you, I don't drink fox wine often But when I do, I drink it out of a can <laughs> The motor on our kayak is broken down, so we're getting a tow home. Cheers, T. Yeah. Not paddle it. Yeah, I know. It's not lazy for a ball. Just leaving Tau. Uh, Papiete is uh, 200 miles uh, dead ahead. Tahiti! How are you doing? Wow, I just realized your hair is like totally mad scientist. Oh, it's yeah. awesome. It's pretty massive. It's, it's, it has a lot of volume. This is like an unprecedented level of volume. That's right, that's right. So we're in Tahiti. That's right. We arrived last night, spent the day <laughs> catching up on Wi Fi, bumped into four uh, different groups of friends. Which is kind of neat. Cruiser boats that happen to also be in the same general anchorage like yeah. arena. Yeah, it makes it makes you feel like the world is so small and that you kind of like belong here. That's right. You're like, oh, my long lost bed. Right, we haven't seen you for a week. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And right now we are hanging out in the boat. Brie pate and homemade bread. Mm -hmm. And $12 Bordeaux. Cheap French Bordeaux. So far, Tahiti is pretty cool. It works. Oh, I got the money in my pocket. But I'm happy, so fuck it. Yo, I'm feeling so fine. I'll be drinking my wine, flying high like a rocket. I got you, you got me. Do you want to join in? My drink is free. I got you. You got me, and we don't know where else we are. Oh, we got no problems to worry about now. We got no others to break us down. Approaching uh, our anchorage in Maria. Hi. Hi, T. Hi, T. <laughs> Hello. Babs. Was it day three in French Polynesia? So we're just off the David Intercontinental, Intercontinental Hotel in Morea and uh, we have a bunch of tourists. Yeah, shit ton of tourists. Um, they basically feed uh, the stingrays and the sharks, and so they bring a boat of tourists out, they feed them, and then a million people hang out with the stingrays and the tourists. So we're gonna go check it out for free. We got no problems to worry about now. We got no others to break us down. We got no problems to worry about now. We got no others to break us down. All right, T. What'd you think of the rays and the sharks? Yeah, they're awesome. Woo woo. Fun. Now we're gonna find something else.
pulled out of uh, Morea. The wind is filled in and we are now sailing back to Papiette. Seven knots. Seven knots. Life is pretty good. Broad reach. It's yeah. Nice. Sunrise here, a little after six, after uh, a fast if somewhat rolly overnight passage from Tahiti to Wahini, which you can see in the background behind me there. A foreboding overcast cloud falling down onto us as we uh, pull into Wahini. But uh, just gonna clear that little reef marker and try and find a spot in the shallows, hopefully before it rains. Pulling into our sweet little anchorage just as the skies open up with rain. You can always tell it's coming because there's always a rainbow when it's about to rain. And there's the rain. of many, says Ed. It's not so bad, is it? Here, here. A little awkward for sure. In our bedroom, no less. But so it goes. Woo -woo. Hello. Hi, Ed is super hyper because he's hungover. And compensating with coffee. Yeah. We are anchored in the dink, uh, about to go for a snorkel in the famed coral garden. Hopefully there isn't too much coral weed though. We've seen some floating, which kills the coral and... Isn't very pretty. Yeah, isn't exactly pretty. But it's a huge coral garden, so probably there's somewhere beautiful.
some sort of shit obstructing the actual path. I can't tell from here what it is. It'll be exciting. It's pretty, it's, I mean, it's, just, it's a small path. It's narrow. Nice. We are approaching Bora Bora. And the uh, breaking waves behind us are pretty spectacular, to put yeah. it mildly. They do not come out in the footage at all, but they're pretty big. Huge blue and white spray. And, you know, a quarter of a mile away. It's not that close, but it sure feels it. Yeah. Avoiding the shallows through this pass. Good look out on the bow. And something good to look at from the stern. Oh yes. And then we're just gonna anchor out there yonder past the reef. in Bora Bora. Yeah, this is our last night in French Polynesia. How was your final happy hour in Bora Bora? It was very satisfying. Why? Uh, I had exactly 5,000 magical French Polynesian dollars left. <laughs> and uh, happy hour, you get two for one beer. And tower it was a tower. tower of beer. It was amazing. And Ed has been eyeing this for a while. So it was really quite serendipitous, actually. Nine liters of draft beer for 50 bucks. Yeah. Shared it with uh, a dozen of our closest friends. And that was it. Tomorrow morning, um, there's about 10 of us that are leaving Bora Bora. Um, 10 boats of us. 10 boats, yeah. But it looks like it's gonna be great wind. Um, the entire time so hopefully we'll make it in seven days that would be cool what up tea we're leaving bora bora and french polynesia see ya see it moving and we're leaving right as a squall is hitting so that's cool yeah a little bit overcast <laughs> 